Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by the law office of Douglas Viviani. Douglas Viviani has been providing quality legal service for over 26 years. We're a general practice firm and can handle any legal matter that you may have for a reasonable fee. If you are involved in a car accident, starting a business, planning your estate, or need a criminal attorney, please call 631-681-1910 or email us at vivianilaw at aol.com for a free consultation. Get the justice you deserve. Contact the law office of Douglas Viviani at vivianilaw at aol.com. Com. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip That started from this topic point of boy, this tiny ship Welcome to Everything Old is New Again. This is our continuing September silliness. What is the best sitcom of all time? We are now discussing the 1960s. 60s. That, of course, was Gilligan's Island. Starts our first entry of nine in this uh, uh, decade. We usually wanted to do eight, but then we had a disagreement and a tie between Dave and I between Gilligan's Island and Brady Bunch, which would be the last one of the eight, necessarily not last in our judgment, but which one should should be the one that makes good, the final So eight. all in all, a good decade for sitcoms. Real good think? decade, yes, absolutely. The scores are very tight. There's no clear cut over and above winner. No. Let's just go through the, the rules once again. We're doing this as a March Madness. We have rated these shows based upon, number one, are they consistently funny? Are the laughs every show? Number two, the longevity. Is, is the funny, are the show still funny today? Number three, are there any quotes, routines, or catchphrases used in our lexicon still to this day? And number four, are there lovable, iconic, or recognized characters? A little bonus point, or we will actually take away if the show jumped the shark, and we will add a point for every spinoff. Now, of course, uh, Gilligan's Island or Brady Bunch did not have any spinoffs. Um, Gilligan's Island, you go back, and I was looking at that, and it's so iconic, everyone knows it. But, I mean, do you watch it anymore? Can you watch it? Dave Cohen. I watched it, actually, (laughs) in a rerun um, a few weeks ago because it just happened to be on, and I was sitting there with my son, who's 15. And um, I said, watch this. This was, you know, pretty popular back when I was a kid. And uh, after five minutes, we looked at each other, and we went, wow, this is really bad. Yeah. Hence the reason why it only lasted three seasons. I don't mean to say because some of our shows are even less than that. Abigail was two seasons from last week. Much better quality comedy. This was, this was I don't know what, I don't know how this uh, made the list, but it did because you're still talking about it. Right. Exactly. And that's the reason. Later. That's the reason. Everyone, yeah. everyone knows it. It's part of, you know, Everyone knows it. But is it funny every single show? No. No. So I don't think it's going to win. How about Brady Bunch? Well, all I hear all day long at school is how great Marsha is at this or how wonderful Marsha did that. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And that's really the only memorable clip. We talk about that or the memorable lines. In this particular show, to me, that's where the deficiency is. You talk about um, this show. It is something that people loved back in the day. And still are watching now. I think it might be on Nick at Night or something. It's still around. Right. Um, and and people have a warm heart, place in their heart for it. But I don't think it's up there either. I, I think it's kind of low on the list of a sitcom. Right. No, it, you know, the laughs weren't necessarily there. You didn't sit through 30 minutes of the Brady Bunch laughing your sides off. It was mostly about the characters and the relationships. Um, the concept was really cool. Two different families coming together. Um, Alice, a beloved character who, by the way, Ann B. Davis, she passed away right. uh, not too recently, sadly. And um, it, I think for that reason, it, it's still ingrained in, in everyone's mind. The right, so much. for two, the reason people might ask why is it in the final eight then, well, two of our four categories, the longevity and the characters, it's pretty, rates pretty high. Right. And the memorable line's very low in my world. And funny, yeah, it's kind of mediocre. Right. So again, we're starting off here with two that I'm not so sure are going to win this round. Let's see if uh, the next show uh, brings a little more hope. Oh, yes, I remember now. Missed it by that much. <laughs> well, that's only, uh, you know, eight seconds of that show. But just by hearing the eight seconds, I don't know about most people, but I think a lot of people will still recognize what show that is. Get Smart. Exactly. And uh, that show, uh, to me, was something that I could still watch. 
still laugh. I think it's funny all the time. Uh, had, it was very creative with Jaime the robot. It was created with the, you know, the, the dog. I forget the name of the dog there that they had. And all the, this cone of silence and all the quotes, you know. A lot of memorable quotes that, that I oh, yeah. know, Sorry about that, Chief. Still use. Or, right. Um, Missed it by that much. Right, right. Well, somebody says something, you go, and loving it. <laughs> right. You know, he's, he's, he's right there Would with that. Would you believe an angry mom of Girl Scouts? Exactly. <laughs> or, you know, I asked you not to tell me that. You know, like, <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a, a show that I rated uh, higher than Dave for sure. Um, but I really get a kick out of that show. I could still watch it. I, it, I think it was inventive in its day. Remember, the 60s were quirky. Um, that right. was done kind of like Batman, a little more refined, a little more, lot more jokes, a lot more for comedy, but can't be uh, take off yes. of 007, if you exactly. will. Exactly. So, right. But that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Let's, let's see if there's any more competition in this, this uh, round. Well, let me just give you a few pointers on how to handle rowdies. The first thing you do is to get the psychological edge on your adversary by showing supreme confidence. And then you just look them straight in the eyes like this. <laughs> like this, Barney? Yeah, that's coming. Close the eyes just a little bit more. <laughs> and then if you have any trouble closing them, while your opponent will close them for you. There you go. That's Andy Griffith at the end with an, uh, I hate to use this word all the time, but iconic, with a character that I think people still to this day know Barney Fife. Exactly. I right. thought you were going to say Opie, but yes, Barney <laughs> Fife as well. But that show had lots of those characters. Aunt B, Aunt and B. people may not, you know, know what that means, but she even represents the person that comes along and, you know, helps you with your daily chores, so to speak. Right. You know, that kind of person. Right. Um, Roger, what's the name? Sprague? Uh, I forget that fellow's name. There was uh, another, uh, there's also Goma Pyle. Right. Another character. There was um, uh, Floyd the Barber. Um, there was Goober. Howard Sprague at the end. Um, this show was on Howard for eight years. Howard Sprague, right. right. I forgot about him. This show was on for, for eight years. Yeah, and it, and it was, you know, again, a lot of laughs. You know, you could. I still watch it today, and I can, I can laugh Did it jump the times. shark when uh, Don Knotts left? It, it might have. I would, say, I, I, I would I challenge that. I actually I agree with see what you're saying, because that's a great character, but they replaced him with great characters thereafter. They did. Yeah. So that was a real, real fun show. I think that's in the runnings with, with Get Smart. Um, let's see if there's any others. We'll try one more entry for this. All show. right, how many guns in that box? We have 24 guns in crate, and we will have another 24 guns by time frost is on pumpkin. When is the frost on the pumpkin? Before Beaver starts building them. When is that? Day after Goose flies south. <laughs> Couldn't you be a little more specific, Chief? How about Thursday? Yeah. <laughs> this is an underrated show i don't know why people more people don't talk about and it. the show is called f troop correct to me uh well it was on for two years and that could be some of the reason but anytime you watch that this might be just me i don't know I and mean, it's kind of a mystery to me this show doesn't get the press it should get no, and I don't know why it wasn't on longer than, than two seasons I'm really good sure question because it was so funny right. i mean uh, it look it 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 was not politically the most correct show uh, and the way it portrayed Native Americans. I don't even think Native American actors played the Native Americans on the show. Right. Uh, but for pure, you know, comedy, it, it, it was pretty good. Yeah, and, it, you know, you got, uh, you know, Forrest Tucker was in a lot of, lot of movies with sort of analogous to Ernest Borgnine in, in, in McHale's Navy. Like, he right. was a movie star. Right. He was in John Wayne movies. Uh, westerns and things, and he came to this. He, Larry Storch uh, was the, if you want to call a breakout character, breakout character of this of this show. And this show, Wrangler uh, Jane. Oh, come on. Yes, for that alone. Up there with uh, with Jeannie as exactly as an icon of, of, of those days of purely for comedy reasons. Yes, uh, all she would do is come in and kiss Wilma Par. What, what, what's the name? Palmer, Captain Palmer, 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 Palmer. Uh all the time, and he'd say, uh, "Janie, how many times did I tell you not in front of the men?" Right? You see all the time. <laughs> That's the only reason why we mention her, of course. Oh yeah, no, for the acting ability. <laughs> Tremendous amount of guest stars going through this. A lot of people came on board yeah. uh, for those years. Right. Don Rickles made his way through right. here. And, and uh, this was a real fun, real fun show. Um, so as we all stand here, I think we're down to Get Smart, Andy Griffith, and F Troop uh, out of the first ones that we've mentioned so far. Do you have a feeling as to any of those three if you think, um, you know, they, they might uh, win over the other? Uh, you know... 
Well, we haven't done the others yet. We got but, four more. Yeah. But I would say, um, who's the front you know, runner for me? It's it's Andy Griffith. Okay, um, for That's, me, it's Get Smart for sure because right. of the. I think the lines. I don't know. Andy Griffith has the lines, the memorable lines, right. or the memorable. Well, they both have the memorable characters. Now, right. longevity. Andy Griffith is still on to yes. this day, right. like twice a day. It's it's, it's right. airing. Um, Get Smart. Get smart not I don't so think much. so. It's not. It's not. And they made a. Didn't um, so they made a, a movie? Oh, they made movies, recently. many movies, and what's the name? The guy uh, from the office, uh, Carell, yeah. whatever he Steve Carell. Yeah, yeah, and it really didn't do nah. well. The one before that, the nude bomb in the seventies with Don Adams, did not do so well. No, um, but we're not talking about that. Really, we're talking about the series and the time. Those five Correct. years Correct. that this show was on the air. I remember it as a kid. It was it was a big. All hit. right, look forward to it all the time. Exactly. We'll be right back. Of the Civil War was near when quite accidentally A hero who sneezed abruptly seized retreat And reversed it to victory this portion of Everything Old is New Again is sponsored by ResumeDoctorInc.com. When you're seeking to change your career, apply for a promotion, or trying to find a job, your resume is the first thing that's seen that represents you to a potential employer. Make sure your resume makes a clear, concise, and professional impression of who you are so you can get that job interview. Send your current resume to ResumeDoctorInc at AOL.com for a free online review. You'll receive a timely reply with a reasonable quote to properly prepare your resume. Let them make sure you have a resume that will get you noticed. Send your resume or questions to Resume Doctor Inc. at AOL.com. That's Resume Doctor Inc. at AOL.com. Uh, it's a song title. You can do the whole thing. Uh, treachery, treachery. Two faced. Stab, stab in the back. Stab in the back. Uh, a point, point, finger, finger. Accuse, indict, uh, malicious accusery. I got it. What is it? On the street where you live. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Dick Van Dyke. If you get the background of that, of course, he's playing charades with his wife, who you don't hear because she's doing the, the, the symbols with her hands and so forth. And uh, her, they're, they're upset with their neighbors who are right there in the room with them. And uh, there's the joke. Yeah. But this show, to me, came in a real high, really high regard in this um, Decade. No, it did for me too. Based Absolutely. on what? Where are you coming from with this one? Well, it, you know, we all remember. Well, we all, again, I don't know if it's all of we us, all but you remember. and I, <laughs> right, right. The, the, just the opening sequence of every show where you don't know if Dick Van Dyke is going to trip over the ottoman or a tiptoe around it. Before the show even starts, to me, that's like emblazoned in everyone's mind uh, who, who's familiar with the show, at least. Um, and I don't know. There was something about it that he was a comedy writer and it was a family show and there were funny people on it. Um, it just the overall quality, maybe not laughs per minute, but just the overall theme of the show. And good quality laughs. I'm yes. going to say this, too, from different areas. It came from Slapstick. Yes. It came from, I don't know how to describe this, but if you want to say intellectual or something like that, comedy, right. straight out comedy. It came from sitcom type type of just, you know, one-liners. Every show is different. Like we talk about Lucy, which I, I think people might be upset that it didn't come out of the 50s maybe. Um, but it didn't in my world, because in my voting scheme, because that, for, that show became a formula. It was the same setup, punchline, setup, punchline. You right. knew it was going to happen. Right. right. Dick is going to be a misunderstanding and all that. Dick Van Dyke didn't have that. It no, was you very really, creative. Right. Every show was was very different. Um, yeah, his his brother would come on. Remember Jerry Van Dyke? <laughs> he was would come great. On we loved him when he was drunk. He he didn't. He was a total clown. Right. And then when he was sober, he just you know was very quiet, very boring little guy. Right. Yeah. Never remembered being drunk. Yep. And, a lot of characters. A lot of, like a lot of fun with that show. I remember the one where uh, his wife was pregnant and he was all dressed up in the, the suit underneath the covers. No one knew, uh, but and he had the hat on his hat, which they wore back in the day on the headboard, and he was practicing with the hat uh, <laughs> in case he gets the call and he's got to go to the hospital to run real quick. I don't know why, but if you see that scene, I think you see that scene when you have your baby. Like That's, it's so exactly. <laughs> it's and he was great at physical comedy, and that really yes. came through. Exactly. So I think it's right now up against Get Smart. Ah. Stalker. The dog? Ah, here. <laughs> no. Let me let him have him. Uh, Stalker, this is chaos. We don't do 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 here. <laughs> That's also a memorable line. I mean, yes. we don't a chaos, whatever the line happened to be. <laughs> Running yeah. gag throughout. That's, of right. course, Bernie Capel playing uh, um, Zig, Zig, Zigfried. Zigfried. And uh, 
a, a breakout character of that show. And one of the reasons, another one of the reasons why it gets smarts high up there with these, you know, the listings with the characters. Right. But I don't know if you agree that uh, Get Smart is as strong as it is, but it's, I think it's a strong contender here with maybe Dick Van Dyke so far. You tell right. me. Well, I think the next one coming up is pretty high on my list. All right, let's see if we can get something on this. Why don't you try and hit it over the center field fence? Gotcha. Bingo! <laughs> I never saw anything like it. I don't know whether to sign him with the Dodgers or send him to Vietnam. I mean, it's the Munsters, right? Uh, Fred Gwynn. Uh, I tried this. There's a lot of good stuff from that show. Yeah, um, and that's a fun show. Why do you Why do you like that one so much? It, it ended up being very high on my list. In fact, look, I'll I'll say right now, it, to me, that was the winner mm-hmm. of the '60s for a very simple reason. I know we follow these these rules and these metrics guidelines. Um, it, it just won for me on every level. It was, uh, I don't remember laughing at a show more often in the 30 minute segment than I did for the Monsters. Um, j- just the, the bizarreness of, of, Fred, Fli- of Fred Flintstone. <laughs> Fred Flintstone? Hello? Uh, uh, I'm thinking Fred Gwynn, the yes. actor who played uh, Herman Munster, but just him as Frankenstein just going out in the world. Trying every day. out for the Dodgers. That's what that clip and was, that, by the right, way. Right, exactly. Yeah. Why not try out for the Dodgers, right? <laughs> why, why wouldn't he be good? And just Leo DeRocher was a, a yep. Hall of Fame manager, yep. was in that episode as well, and he was the one making those comments. Uh, and, uh, you know, you had the vampire, Grandpa, you had the, the, the werewolf, Eddie Munster, the, the son. You had every famous uh, movie horror character represented as someone in this very functional family. It was right. just, to me, it was just really Well, and funny. it beats out clearly the Adams Family, which we t- talked about on our intro show to this. Adams Family was a nice show, but it, those characters weren't as lovable, if you will. I don't think. It certainly was the same kind of theme. But these characters were lovable, especially Grandpa down the basement with his tinkering with, uh, you know, the, Always turning into a bat or experimenting with right. something. And causing, right. And it was um, his father-in-law. It was, it was Herman's father. So the relationship right. set up between the Dracula and Frankenstein, was, basically, right. right? Very clever. Uh, the only thing is that show was only on two years again that's not a, it's not a determining factor at all right. uh, but w- we just sit here and wonder why only two years you know as we see here because it really it really was a, a fun show maybe they ran out of ideas something like that i don't know but the residents of 1313 mockingbird lane are are uh, are in the game right. if you will right. let's uh, see if it uh, you know if it it's, it adds up it 300 dollars mr brown would you believe it that's pretty hard to believe would you believe a quart I mean, that's another a line. You know, uh, you're tipping your hand too much with these. <laughs> you keep playing the. You did that with the honeymooners last sure episode, did. and suddenly Get Smart is popping up as every other quote. Why I wonder who won. <laughs> well, but are there quotes from Dick Van Dyke, uh, the monsters, which I think are the two that are up here, but also Andy Griffith? Not that it's the only factor, but it is one of the factors. Let's look at so far. Um, all of those shows are funny. Um, longevity. Right. Uh, you know, that's a question. And memorable lines. Certainly that might put it over the top, for me anyway. All of them had wonderful characters, um, that's for sure. But we still have a couple more. We do, and I think this is a pretty good character here. Oh, well, I am not jealous, Master. Who is this girlfriend? Susie. You will stay home tonight. No, I'm not. I... (laughs) Jeannie, let me out of here. Well, I'm sure glad I came during visiting hours. It's a jail. In the middle of your living room. And that's uh, uh, Major Nelson. What are you doing? <laughs> I dream of Jeannie. Um, we heard a little bit of Bill Daly there as the next door neighbor, which might be a spinoff for us from this topic to what was the best next door neighbor. I think he's in the game. He's definitely in the game. And of course, you had Doctor Bellows at the end, uh, right? You know, and and Barbara Eden as Jeannie. Come on, as a kid, Barbara this is Eden. A common theme. You keep bringing up the these. Uh, just uh, again, these women. she was funny. Yeah, she, she was funny. Really was. But that show, and Larry Hagman, of course. Classic. I mean, of right. those three characters, they went on to do other things as well. Right. Um, they were clearly talented in what they did. I don't know. Does that show hold up against Andy Griffith, uh, even F Troop, um, Dick Van Dyke? I don't know that you can watch that. I think that, to me that is in the same range as, as Gilligan's Island. It was great Maybe at the time. A little, bit, little better quality. A little better but, quality, but yeah. still in that range. It's great yeah. at the time, but I'm really I'll not going to sit down and watch it again anymore. So... Um, I don't know. That, that's where I stand on that. Let's see what, one last entry. Summer and winter, you're drinking homemade moonshine, washing with homemade lye soap, 
and your bathroom is 50 feet from the house and you ask should you move? <laughs> yeah, I reckon you're right. Man, be a dang fool to leave all this. <laughs> And of course, that's the Beverly Hillbillies. Um, that was on for nine years. It was a long-running show. Consistently funny. Yes. Um, yeah, it was. It so was. where does it stand on your list? Uh, all right, well. In, 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 you know, yeah, so before we tallied all right. uh, your votes and my votes and got to a winner, m- individually for me, believe it or not, um, Andy Griffith came out ahead of the Munsters, but only because it had a spinoff. Mm. And I know we set these rules down, but I, I wouldn't have weighted it as much. So, in other words, if I ignore the spinoff, uh, for me, the funniest show is The Monsters coming out of the 60s. Okay. But not. it's interesting, behind the scenes, none of the categories that we talked about, the four categories, did you label or give it a five? You gave it four across the board. And, and that, I was pretty consistent, I think, yes. across every decade. It, it's hard to get a five for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, that kind of guy. I just uh, don't give fives easily. <laughs> your, your end result, was these, these were separated by like half of a point. True. You know, so they're, all, they're all great. You know, I think, to me, F Troop, um, is, is, F Troop and Dick Van Dyke are second to me to Get Smart. I think Get Smart So uh, the overall the winner. To me, roll the drum roll. I think we're really, really close here. It's a shame we can't pick two, and it's a shame someone has to lose, as they say. Right? That's true. But to me, it is clearly get smart. And I think if you go back and watch that show now, I think you may have a renewed uh, appreciation for the cone of silence right. and all the lines and the invisible wall, his apartment, and so forth. So we will see you. In- go ahead, Dave. You no, know, I was just going to say I I don't disagree with you. I would have picked something else, but I think get smart is a good good show. Good show to come out of the 60s. Excellent. We'll see you next week with the 70s on Everything Old is New Again. Dot biz. <laughs>